Hey, good morning, guys. Um, as you probably know by now, I've actually been quarantined and uh, will be for quite a while. Um, one of my family members actually has COVID, and as a result, um, I've been exposed. And uh, my time, my my quarantine time hasn't even begun yet because their time of infection hasn't ended yet. Um, so I'm going to be out for a little while. So wanted to touch base with you, wanted to give you a sense of, of last week, um, talk with you about how we're going to move forward. Um, not surprisingly, things are going to be much the same. Um, the only difference is that you're going to be uh, watching uh, watching screencasts of, of material when necessary, rather than having me there in person. Um, the nice thing is that we have Miss Call as a resource, and she's amazing, and she has made herself available to you all as well. Um, so things are going to be great. Um, if you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, but under Understand, guys, you should expect things to proceed as normal. Um, so with that said, let's jump over here to the calendar and let's take a look at where we're at so that you can see where we're going. Um, so I found out that I was quarantined on the 18th um, and I got sort of pulled out of school quickly. Um, as you know, when we got together then on the 19th, um, and then the 20th, uh, we looked at the bond introduction um, information, and you did that with a screencast. Now, prior to that, the last time that I saw you, uh, we did this periodicity material. Um, just like normal, those things should have been turned in on the 19th if you're in A day or the 20th if you're in a B day class. Um, those links opened up after the class as usual had a couple of you email me saying that you couldn't turn things in but again you were trying to do it before they were due um, so understand that i will still be opening the links to assignments um, after the day that we should have reviewed them. Um, the only difference is, is now that instead of being able to ask questions in class, um, if you do have questions about um, any of the homework, realizing that when you turn it in, you're agreeing that your questions were answered. Um, if you do have questions about the homework, what you'll do is either um, reach out to me through email, which isn't ideal because obviously I can't sit down with you directly, or you certainly have the opportunity uh, to approach Miss Call um, outside of class and generously she said she'd be happy to help you as well but understand guys we're still moving forward um, please don't fall into the misconception that because I'm gone important things aren't happening um, as a matter of fact it's it's quite the opposite um, so last time Thursday and Friday we went over the bond introduction material uh, you'll notice that the due dates for this are now Monday and Tuesday of next week so you can look forward to those links opening up after you're done with class uh, today and we're going to continue to move forward um, so again if you have questions about any of this feel free to reach out to Miss Call or you can certainly email me as well um, so today then what we're going to do is we are going to do a lab but this lab is a little different than labs that you've done before in that it's actually an in-class activity um, where you are going to be drawing on the material that you learned during the periodicity unit and you're going to use that to fashion a periodic table. Um, so what you'll need to do um, as you're getting ready for this this experience is you'll need uh, your periodic tables. You'll also want your class notes from last time. Um, if you don't have those out yet, don't grab them right now because you're going to miss the introduction to the lab, uh, but you're going to need those and then of course you're going to need um, the lab handout which you uh, should have already uh, received or printed if you're doing this from home. So with that said, let's take a look at how this lab works. Um, so you'll see in front of you, up on the screen here, uh, this, this lab is actually two sheets. Uh, you've got this first page, and this is all that you're going to be turning in to me or to Miss Call. Uh, well, turn into your teacher. If you're Miss Call's student watching this, you'll turn it into her. Um, this is all that you're going to be turning in. Um, at the end of the lab, you're going to see that this second page is going to get absolutely destroyed. Um, so the only page that you'll be turning in is this first page. Um, so first of all, let me orient you to the page. Obviously, you're going to write your name and class period on here. And then clearly, just by looking at this, you can see that this is a skeleton of the periodic table. Over here on the left, we have the S sublevel. Here on the right, we have the P sublevel. 
and then you'll notice this squiggly line down the middle is actually the missing D sublevel, which you now know are called the transition metals. So um, if you can imagine the D sublevel gone, um, but if you understand what you're looking at, this is the first period, second period, third period, and fourth period. So this would then be the 4S sublevel, and this is then the only place that those um, transition metals would be missing because you don't see those transition metals in the first three periods. Okay, with that said then, let me explain to you what you're going to be doing on this lab. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on this page, and you'll notice that the instructions are very brief. Um, so let's go through them. So the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take these lettered boxes and you're going to carefully cut them out. Um, once you've done that, then what you're going to do, as it says here in this second step, is you're going to use the clues that are down below. These would be the clues. You're going to use these clues in order to figure out where these uh, letters go on the periodic table. You're going to do that um, by following these clues and taking advantage of the stuff that you've learned over the last couple class periods uh, to figure out how to put this all together. So you'll notice that the very first clue, which is here, says this. It says, the following elements are in groups. And we remember that groups are the vertical columns on the periodic table. So a great place for you to start would be to break these letters into groups. I would literally create piles with these, um, putting them in groups. Now, for example, you'll notice that the, it says the first group is Z, R, and D. Now, you've got to understand what that, what that means and what it doesn't. Um, so when you're done putting your table together, you can be sure that Z, R, and D will be in the same group. But first of all, it will not be the first group. And hopefully that makes sense because if you look at the skeleton of the table, obviously that first group has four boxes in it. So three letters won't fill four boxes. Um, the other thing that it is not saying is it will not be Z, R, and D top to bottom. The only thing that you can say for sure is that ZR and D will be in a group, PSIF will be in a group, and so on. So now that you've broken these into groups, or once you've broken these into groups, what you're going to do then is you're going to start using these clues. So you'll notice that the second clue says this. It says J has an atomic number three times that of T. Now guys, this is interesting because right now this clue doesn't really provide you any information. Of course, the reason is because you don't know what T is. But as soon as you know what T is, you'll also then know what J is by um, taking the atomic number of T and multiplying it by 3. Um, what this points out to you then is that you will not use these clues in order. But when you are done using all of, when you've, you're done using all of these clues, you will then know where each one of these boxes go. There won't be any guessing. Each one of these letters has one and only one place where they can go. Um, there is one, however, clue that I'd like to talk with you about, and that's this one. It says that I2A is the simple formula of an oxide. Um, and we haven't really talked about what oxides are, but I think you can probably piece this together. So obviously oxide and oxygen are closely related words. And so what this is actually telling you is that letter A will be oxygen. Um, all the rest of these you should be able to pick up on um, based upon the things that you've learned in the last couple days. Um, so what you're going to want to do then is as you go through this, you will use the clues, you will place these letters on the skeleton of the periodic table, and when you're all done, you will know where these letters all go on the table. At that point then, what you're going to do, as it says right here, is you are going to glue these boxes in place and you're then going to answer the conclusion questions. Um, you'll notice down here at the bottom, guys, we've got three conclusion questions to answer. And I'd like to remind you, guys, everything that you turn in, every lab that you turn in, every test that crosses my desk, guys, the understanding is that this is your best work. 
That means that you're writing in complete sentences. That means that you're writing in well-developed thoughts. Um, some of you emailed me in the last couple days to ask me about the periodicity activity and why your score on that maybe wasn't what you'd expected. And frankly, for many of you, it's because you chicken scratched answers down to those conclusion questions rather than developing well thought out sentences, which if you reread the instructions for that particular assignment, that was the expectation. So guys, please take the time to write well, take pride in the work that you're doing. And uh, when you're all done with this, you'll turn it in. Um, if you get this done today, that's terrific. And please put it in the basket. Um, if you do not get this done today, uh, you'll be taking this home for homework and you'll be turning it in uh, when we return after Thanksgiving break. Um, and guys, just so you know, I do ask that you please um, glue these boxes in place and uh, not simply light, write the letters in the boxes. Um, that, that's the expectation. So please glue them down and, and turn this in either today or when we get back after Thanksgiving break. So guys, uh, sorry for the complexity of me being gone. Um, sort of one of the signs of the times, um, but certainly we are able to adapt and figure this out well. Again, guys, I'm an email away. I'd be happy to communicate that way. Um, your most direct access to immediate support is through Miss Call. Um, but guys, I, I look forward to uh, seeing your uh, seeing your work on this lab. You should also know that I have your uh, replacement test from the previous unit. I will get those graded and recorded just as soon as I can. So enjoy your time working on this lab. I think you're going to find it great. Um, feel free to work with the person directly next to you, but please don't form larger groups as we try to continue to social distance well. And guys, have a safe and wonderful Thanksgiving. All right, take care. Bye-bye.